one of California's largest insurance companies dropping thousands of policyholders. What this means for homeowners in high-risk fire areas. Showers are gradually taking over with more firing up potentially overnight into the morning. Brian has the areas that will get a several hour break over the weekend. Plus, one of Ferndale's most popular streets is shut down suddenly. Witnesses capturing video of a bomb squad moving in. What we're still learning at this hour. I don't know what challenges prison holds for me, but I do know that I want to return to society a better person. A man with ties to Trinity County has been sentenced for the fatal shooting of a kindergartner. That and more starts now on the North States News. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Happy Friday evening, everybody. Thanks for being with us. I'm Glenn Cassie. Starting this summer, 30,000 California policyholders will be told they are being dropped by California's largest home insurer, State Farm, just nine months after announcing it would stop accepting any new home insurance policies. The North State's News' Tyler Van Dyke joins us now with more details on how it will affect us here in the North State. Tyler? Good evening, Glenn. State Farm announced it would be discontinuing coverage for 72,000 homes and apartments affecting homeowners' policies, rental insurance, and other property insurance. The insurer says they will occur on a rolling basis over the next year, beginning on July 3rd, for homeowners' rental dwelling, residential community associations, and business owners' policies. It's a move that will affect those in both Butte and Shasta County. However, Shasta County homeowners, in particular those in the 96001 area code, will see the biggest impact. I spoke with a resident in that area code who is with a different carrier than State Farm and who wished to remain anonymous about when he was told his insurance will be dropped as well. In December, I got a notice from my mortgage company saying that my insurance was going to be canceled. Because of all the forest fires around here, mm -hmm. that a lot of the insurance companies were canceling people. I called up my insurance company. And he said, finally found me some insurance, but I was going to have to have two different ones. And uh, he said one of them was going to be uh, 23, around $2,300 a year. State Farm will also be withdrawing from offering commercial apartment policies for apartment owners with a non-renewal of 42,000 policies, although renters' insurance will not be impacted. In a statement on their website, the insurer blamed inflation, regulatory costs, and the increasing risks from catastrophes like wildfires, which the North State is no stranger to. Also in the statement, State Farm says it will be notifying customers impacted by the decision before their policies expire to provide information on other coverage options. If you would like to see the map of those impacted, you can find that on our website, krcrtv.com. Tyler Van Dyke, The North State's News. Thank you, Tyler. This is a live look along Highway 44 as you come into downtown Reading from the rooftop camera here at KRCR. It's kind of still spitzing a little bit out there. <laughs> here to tell us about the latest conditions is first Sergeant Meteorologist Brian Schofield. Good evening, Brian. That's, That's what you call it, spritzing, spitzing. You see those little drops coming Something by? Something like that. In between those two, a spritzer, whatever. Yes. That's what we're getting right now. It's all, uh, although that said, uh, you can see where the low is offshore right now, but that said, there were some uh, bigger thunderstorms earlier in the day, but it's really been very light so far in most areas, let's say. But once this comes ashore, oh, you'll notice that. You'll hear it. You'll see it, you'll feel it, and that'll be tomorrow morning. So plan on that. Right now, it's just kind of hovering around. It's almost stalled out. Oftentimes, when you hear about a stationary front, they do wobble around a little bit for 100 miles or so. So they don't always just stay put, but we call them stationary anyway. And this is, this is like this is really what's happening. Our cold front has been stalling out from this, and it's just kind of hovering around offshore. No surprise, we knew this was a slow mover, but you can see some of the areas like through Soham that are just in between action right there. Kind of interesting to see to the north wet, to the south wet, but not in areas where uh, you might expect there to be some rainfall. Redding getting some more showers moving in ever so slowly up to Lakehead as well, but Bernie sitting pretty with nothing going on. And Chico always sitting pretty after those thunderstorms earlier to your east. Things look pretty tame now. They won't be tame for tomorrow coming up in your first alert forecast. Witnesses say Ferndale's Main Street was shut down Friday due to a potential explosive device. Take a look at this. This is some new video provided by a North Coast viewer. We can see a bomb squad team was called to the area. It looks like authorities 
We're using an explosive ordnance robot also to safely remove, remove the device. Caltrans was reporting the street was closed to all traffic, although it's since been reopened. Witnesses say the scene has also been cleared. No explosions were reported. We did reach out to the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office to try and get some more details as to exactly what happened. We have yet to hear back. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. An Orange County man was sentenced today after shooting and killing a six year old boy in a road rage accident nearly three years ago. 27 year old Marcus Ares once lived in the North State, graduating from Trinity High School in Weaverville. He was convicted by a jury in January for one count of second degree murder and one count of shooting into an occupied car after he opened fire on a Southern California freeway back in May of 2021. Ares spoke one more time in court about the child he killed before learning his fate. And I am so sorry for ever hurting him and for the pain that he went through because of me. He never deserved it and neither did his family. Despite that regret and those words, the judge sentenced Ares to the maximum. He will spend 40 years to life in state prison. The DA says Ares could be eligible for a parole hearing in 20 years. New tonight, two people were arrested for robbery in broad daylight out in Tehama County. The Tehama County Sheriff's Office says deputies were contacted by a robbery victim Friday morning, claiming they were robbed at gunpoint in Rancho Tehama. The victim's cell phone was used to track the vehicle to an address on Longhorn Lane. Deputies say they found the stolen items and a gun inside 43-year-old Robert Parazzi's vehicle. Parazzi, who was on parole for burglary, and 47-year-old Christina Wheeler were both arrested on several charges. A man is facing life in prison for dozens of charges related to the sexual assault of children. The Shasta County District Attorney's Office says William Mateo was found guilty of 86 sexual assault related charges involving two children on Thursday. The DA's office says the special allegations associated with these charges were also found to be true. Mateo will be back in court for sentencing on June 14th. He could be facing up to 1,155 years to life in state prison. We're learning tonight that the Reading Police will activate the red light cameras at the intersection of Churn Creek Road and Hartnell Avenue starting Saturday. Red light cameras are already at the intersections of Bocelli and Cypress, Hilltop Drive in Cypress, Pine and Tehama Streets, Churn Creek Road and East Cypress, and Shasta and Market Streets. Drivers will have a 30-day warning period ending on May 13th if they fail to stop for a red light. A historic theater right around the corner from Chico State University recently hit the market. The North State's News, Hannah Gutierrez, spoke with realtors today. It's something that all community members know of. Um, it's a place for the community to gather, and it's just been an incredible, iconic building here in Chico. The El Rey Theater originally opened in 1906 as a film screening and performance venue. The theater is the longest continually operated movie theater in the state and the third in the country. Going through multiple name changes and world events, the theater has been named the El Rey since 1948. The theater has hosted a multitude of events with lines down the block each weekend to this day. Realtors Alicia Simpkins and her coworker Rob Haley listed the property at the end of March on sale for just short of $2 million. The only reason the sellers are selling is because they've moved away to be closer to family. Uh, and so they're really looking for a visionary to come in and get the El Rey back to their vision and what it used to be. Located on 2nd Street in downtown Chico, the theater can hold 1,400 people, the sale including more than just the venue. In addition to the massive auditorium space, they have newer seating uh, in the main lobby area, which all of Chico knows so well. Uh, there's also two separate storefronts down below that allow for extra income or for somebody to utilize those um, with whatever vision they have for the building. Simpkin started her family and business in Chico, proud and excited to take on the project and hopes the community will continue to share their love and support to the theater as it heads into the next phase of its history. I would love to see someone bring the El Rey back to um, what it once was. With the visionaries here in Chico, I'm sure whatever it does turn into will be something that we're all proud to see. And don't worry, events are still being held at the theater while it's for sale, but they think it won't be on the market for long. 
Up next, a truck driver lucky to be alive after a turkey burst through his windshield, sending his trailers flying off the road. That and more when we come back. Stay with us. Morgan truck driver is in good spirits and recovering after a crash that could have killed him. He hit an animal and it wasn't a deer or anything else that may immediately come to mind. Jeffrey Limblom explains. Laughing. <laughs> Lots of laughing. So I had actually shown him the second I got it, the picture of the dash cam that we got of the turkey looking down the barrel of the dash cam coming at his windshield. <laughs> and even with the rib, he was laughing about it. He thought it was hilarious. Emily Jean Duell says it wasn't all a laughing matter when she got a phone call from a nurse explaining to her that a bird had smashed through her father Dave Duell's windshield, knocking him unconscious and sending a semi hauling three trailers behind off the roadway in rural Oregon. She knew whatever did this had to have been a big bird. I was thinking a hawk. She would eventually learn that it was a 40 to 50 pound turkey that had flown into the roadway, causing serious damage to the truck and her dad. The bird not just breaking through the front windshield either, as it would also burst through the back. Duel nervously hit the road to look for her dad. She would find him being treated by doctors at a Medford hospital. They were cleaning his wounds and pulled out some turkey feathers. Her father, who she describes as a goofy guy that doesn't take anything too seriously, suffered a broken rib and tooth, a fractured jaw, and a vertebrae in his neck. However, the worst of it, she says, is that he shattered the bone around one of his eyes which will require surgery. They called it an orbital blowout, so the entire bone structure behind his left eye is shattered. Despite the aftermath and what she describes as an emotional roller coaster, she says her father is actually lucky to have crossed paths with the bird and survive. One doctor sharing with her that he could have easily been killed. Like, it all could have been astronomically different. Like, the time to worry about him surviving is over, basically. And now we're just kind of hoping that he can keep function in his eye where the orbital was shattered because that is how he works. And if he loses vision in that eye or loses that eye, he loses his job. Dwell has more joy to help him recover as well. The day he was discharged from the hospital, his daughter-in-law went into labor with his grandchild. Always good to have a happy ending. Get a load of these temperatures. Where, where are those 80s? These don't look like 80s. Now tomorrow, much cooler day to reflect current trends. We've actually dropped these a little lower, but they're going to warm back up again. And for many more days worth, and even 80s are going to show up again, coming up in your first look forecast. Chico State hosted over 100 local high school students for its third annual Concrete Day. The North State's News, Anna Montemore, reports on the growing industry. Very big, complex industry. If you're a young person and you're trying to figure out what you want to do, I would strongly consider the CIM major. Have you ever had an interest in the world of concrete? Well, if not, Chico State's Concrete Industry Management Program, or CIM, could change that. Joining this program, being 100% job placement, and literally get to do things hands-on and work with the materials we will be working with in the field and it's really awesome. It's one of the best decisions I made. And to get more passionate students like Chico State senior Mo Mirza, the CIM program hosts an annual event to help introduce the concrete industry to younger generations. This is Concrete Day. It's a way to bring high school students to learn more about our program. We're very trying to recruit. On Friday, over 100 local high school students gathered to not only get a full look into what the program entails, but also what life would look like after college. It's how we build our hospitals, bridges, roads. So we, we play like a, a very important role in society. Ash Ware is a Chico State CIM alumni who has had a successful journey since he graduated back in 2014. It's, it's really neat because we're all in these leadership positions now. And now we're decision makers in the industry. And so I'm calling on people that I went to school with. And what was once a male-dominated industry is slowly becoming more inclusive. We have a female president, so for me that's like, wow. Like, very great to see that there are women that are in all various positions. They are looking for women because, you know, we're very detail-oriented. Using Friday's concrete day to spark the interest of young students in Butte County. It's like a perfect thing to get into if you want to be a part of something big. And concrete's not going anywhere. It's here for good. Get in, you'll have a job forever. In Chico, Anna Montemore, the North State's News. Members of the Reading Dirt Riders are getting ready for their biggest event of the year. The Shasta Dam Grand Prix is coming up this weekend. Two-day event out by the Shasta Dam is set to have over 500 riders with adult riders 
going out this Saturday, then junior riders taking on the course on Sunday. Despite the rain expected over the weekend, the dirt riders expect a good race, although say it's taken a lot of work to get it here. It takes about 75 people to put on this event. Um, that's just volunteers and they do it on their own, own time uh, from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m. for roughly four days, uh, excuse me, 10 p.m. Um, so it, it takes a lot of people to keep these things going. The course is going to be just about 17 miles, smaller than their usual course, although they're raising the laps to match the normal distance of over 100 miles. Tickets are $10 at the Chappie Shasta off highway vehicle area. And here's a live look at the Sundial Bridge tonight. First Surf Meteorologist Brian Schofield is over in the Weather Center tracking all the incoming rain and snow. Hey, Brian. Tracking more clouds today than anything else, but there has been a few thunderstorms and uh, certainly a few showers, but only a few. More tomorrow. I know uh, that the motorcycles will just, they'll get through everything. They'll cut through it no matter what. I know it. 58, I'll tell you, looking good right now. Our bigger threats are not flooding. I mean, obviously, it could be rain, could be a little heavy at times, but it's truly just whatever shows up with some isolated thunderstorms, the lightning, the wind with that in the moderate category, even some small hail as well. So that's our real threat index for tomorrow. And speaking of the wind, we had it breezy today in a few spots, not so much along the coast. So if you're joining us on the simulcast, things are looking calm and they're reading calm too. See, this is calm. And uh, definitely seen Corning at 11 mile per hour sustained winds. These are sustained winds, not gusts. Uh, 13 in Chico, but the gusts have been up to 20. Here comes that rain for tomorrow. Notice the time frame, 7.30 in the morning. Oh, it's, it's really almost everywhere. Not so much through Lassen or Modoc, and certainly not entirely through Del Norte. And then it breaks apart a little bit, and then we get a several hour break here and there. There'll be a few lighter showers there, but it's not as heavy or as interesting until the next band comes through, and that starts to wrap around uh, by the evening hours. So, you do, so really, there'll be some breaks in the action. But once there's action, there really is plenty of it and snow in the upper elevations down to about 3,500 feet or so, but we're still talking inches. I suppose at the peaks, we could get upwards of a foot. Uh, no one's really saying that so much, but it, it, it certainly could happen by Sunday. And certainly the coldest air has already pulled through by Sunday. So that'll be when we do see the lowest snow levels and you folks in Trinity County as well might get a nice little break too on Sunday, but there'll still be some plenty of rain uh, through Humboldt and uh, certainly through Del Norte and uh, really down through Plumas and uh, Tehama. I think we're going to see plenty of rain from that as well, but then it just fizzles for a later Sunday night and then by Monday it's long gone and our 70s start up pretty rapidly. And then by after that, we're talking even up to 80s. But I'll tell you, some decent rainfall, three quarters of an inch to maybe even a little over an inch in various areas. That's reasonable rainfall for a system that's sticking around for three days. 52 Red Bluff for tonight, 44 Weaverville, 36 in Chester. And really, afternoon highs area-wide will stay about where the overnight lows are. There's not going to be much of a change. Overnight lows, afternoon highs within 5 to 10 degrees of each other. That's it. So a, a cooler day for tomorrow as well. Should be very pleasant. If you didn't like those 80s sneaking up on you, this will do you a nice little number, do you a solid, I'll tell you. But I'm keeping the winds uh, at about 15 to 25 sustained across the area. But that's really more when that system pushes ashore. You'll get it. You'll see what it's all about. So upper 50s across the valley in uh, the most, for the most part, let's say. Uh, but they'll see how quickly those 70s hit by Monday. And then as that system leaves, high pressure builds in, breezy to gusty conditions show up again for next week. Give you a little heads up on that and a first alert on that. Notice the uh, upper 70s by Friday and lower 80s in Reading. So what an interesting turn of events. We warm things up, wet things down, and warm them back up again and keep it dry and keep it sunny throughout most of next week. All right, back to you, Glenn. Thank you, Brian. A pharmacist group says hundreds of prescription drugs are in short supply across the United States. There are 323 active drug shortages around the U.S. The group says that is the highest number of shortages since they started tracking data back in 2001. Some of the products in short supply are oxytocin, pain and sedation medications, along with ADHD drugs. Manufacturers cited supply and demand, business decisions, and raw materials issues as a few reasons for the shortages. Airbnb wants to enable more renters, not just homeowners, to share their residences for cash. Many areas have short-term rental restrictions preventing this, laws that have been on the books for years. Airbnb says it's scaling up efforts to work with state and local governments to push for rules that allow renters to list their places on the platform. Renters would still have to get permission from their landlords, landlords as the company doesn't get involved in lease agreements. And nearly a third of large U.S. companies are considering a shortened work week to help combat burnout. 
The schedules being considered are four or four and a half day work weeks. The findings show how executives have been searching for ways to attract and retain talent in a competitive job market, one that has many employees feeling overworked and underpaid. The idea is still in the experimentation phase. Coming up next in sports, day two of the Masters in Augusta, Georgia, where Tiger Woods is still in contention and a Chico native isn't far off from the leaders. We're back in two minutes. Stay with us. Now, from the North States News, this is the Toyota Sports Desk. Chico's Kurt Kitayama is not far off the lead after the second round of the Masters today. A one over par 73 today puts him at even par halfway through the first major of the year. A breezy day in Augusta as the golfers had to finish Golf yesterday's rain-shortened round before playing 18 today. Max Homa's birdie putt drops here on number four. He's six under in a three-way tie for the lead along with Scotty Scheffler and Bryson DeChambeau. With his putter on number seven, that's working. He's also at six under par. And get this, Tiger Woods not out of it, but out of the bunker on number six. He's won over after an even par 72 today as he makes more golf history by making the cut at the Masters for the 24th straight time. On to the NBA now, where Golden State hosted New Orleans. The Warriors jumped out to a strong start, taking an 11-point lead at several points in the first and second quarters. But New Orleans closed the half on a 35-13 run that put them in control of the game. Pelicans maintained a double-digit lead for most of the third, but were unable to put things away. Triples by Chris Paul, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry pulled the dubs within one possession early in the fourth quarter. And another late flurry from Steph kept the Warriors a play or two away from a tied game late, but it ultimately proved to be too little, too late. Pelicans get the W, 114 to 109, with the Warriors losing control now of their own destiny with play in seeding. They will now need the Lakers and Kings to lose again to avoid returning to the 10th seed in the Western Conference. Stay with us. One last look at our forecast is coming up. Time to get your game on. Saturday is National Scrabble Day. It marks the birthday of its inventor, Alfred Mosher Butts, who was born on April 13, 1899. The game is now so popular, it's sold in 121 countries and played in 29 different languages. More than 150 million Scrabble sets have been sold, and it was even made into a daytime TV game show back in the 1980s. You can enjoy the day by playing with family at home, or, of course, in the 21st century, Brian, we play games online now. That's what we do. Right? right? Words with friends. That was so popular. Uh -huh. We were just talking sure. about this. Actually, I'm looking at that video, looking at the word rain and all that. It's only worth one. Each letter is only worth a one. Only worth one. That's yeah. not even a worthy score. Okay, no. rain tomorrow. Not worthy of a long term. We need, oh, precipitation. That's the word that will pay. Anyway, notice the time frame once again. Later on, things start to tame a little bit better, so you'll get a little window of opportunity to get some shopping done. Grapple would be a good one. Oh, there you go. Back to you. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for watching KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. Jimmy Kimmel is up next. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. We'll see you soon.